Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual Universities course on Business and Technical Communication. I am Saima Asghar Riaz and I will be taking you through this course. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. The main objective of this course is to equip students with skills that will enable them to communicate clearly and concisely in diverse business situations. The students will learn the importance of planning and organizing effective written messages. The course will emphasize on determining objectives and on developing a logical argument before presenting the message in an appropriate format. इस कोर्स में हम डिफरेंट मैसेजेस के बारे में बात करेंगे और ये देखेंगे कि स्टूडेंट्स किस तरह अपने मैसेज को बेहतर तरीके से अपनी ऑडियंस को कम्युनिकेट कर सकते हैं अपना पैगाम आप अपने सुनने वा, सुनने वालों को पढ़ने वालों को किस तरह पहुंचा सकते हैं दी कोर्स इज डिवाइडेड इन टू सेक्शन रिटन कम्युनिकेशन एंड ओरल कम्युनिकेशन एक सेक्शन में हम रिटन कम्युनिकेशन देखेंगे यानी जो हम लिख के जिस अपना पैगाम पहुंचाने की बात करते हैं और दूसरे से एक सेक्शन में हम साथ में हम ओरल कम्युनिकेशन को भी देखेंगे जो कि हम बात के जरिए और जबानी हम अपना पैगाम सुनने वालों तक पहुंचाते हैं और हम ये देखेंगे कि दोनों किस्म की कम्युनिकेशन के दोनों किस्म की बात करने के क्या तरीके हैं और क्या उनके क्या कवानी क्या हैं रिटन कम्युनिकेशन विल कवर प्लानिंग स्ट्रक्चर एंड स्टाइलिस्टिक इशूज़ यानी कि एक पैगाम को हम कंपोज किस तरह करते हैं उसके बारे में हम सोचते क्या हैं उसकी प्लान किस तरह करते हैं उसका फॉर्मेट क्या है उसका स्ट्रक्चर हम उसको किस तरह बेहतर तौर पे लिख सकते हैं और उसमें किस किस्म की लैंग्वेज और स्टाइल के जो अनासर हैं वो हम कौन से इस्तेमाल करते हैं स्पेसिफिकली स्टूडेंट्स विल लर्न टू राइट मेमोज एंड लेटर्स प्रपोजल्स शॉर्ट एंड लॉन्ग रिपोर्ट्स एंड प्रोसीजर्स एंड पॉलिसी डॉक्यूमेंट्स ये सब चीज़ें हम रिटन कम्युनिकेशन के सेक्शंस में देखेंगे और क्योंकि जाहिर है बिजनेस कम्युनिकेशन में आपको इन सब चीज़ों की मेमोज़ की खतूत की रिपोर्ट्स बेशक वो लंबी हों या छोटी हों और ऐसे डॉक्यूमेंट्स जिनमें पॉलिसी और प्रोसीजर प्लान किया गया हो वो सब आपको टेक्निकल और बिजनेस सिचुएशंस में ज़रूरत होती है मोर ओवर स्टूडेंट्स विल लर्न टू सिम्प्लीफाई कॉम्प्लेक्स इन्फॉर्मेशन थ्रू एडिटिंग एंड रिवाइजिंग के अगर कोई मुश्किल इन्फॉर्मेशन है उसको सिंपल uh, किस तरह किया जा सकता है उसको आसान तरीके से किस तरह समझाया जा सकता है अपनी ऑडियंस को इसके लिए हम आपको सिखाएंगे कि आप अपने पैगाम को रिवाइज़ किस तरह करें एक बार लिख के उसको दोबारा देखना उसको एडिट किस तरह करें उसमें जो भी चेंजेस करने हो वो कैसे करेंगे आप एंड दिस विल देन एनहांस योर एबिलिटी टू क्रिएट पावरफुल डॉक्यूमेंट्स टू सेल योर आइडियाज़ जाहिर है अगर आप एक बिजनेस सिचुएशन में कोई भी डॉक्यूमेंट लिख रहे हैं तो वो इसलिए लिख रहे हैं ज़्यादातर वक्त अगर कोई ख़त है या रिपोर्ट है या पॉलिसी डॉक्यूमेंट है कि आपका जो आइडिया है वो आपके पढ़ने वाले तक पहुंचे तो जब हम इस कोर्स के थ्रू इन हम इस तरह की आपको टेक्निक सिखाएंगे स्ट्रेटजी सिखाएंगे जिनसे आपके जो डॉक्यूमेंट्स हैं वो मज़ीद बेहतर हो सकेंगे और आपके जो आइडियाज़ हैं वो आपके पढ़ने वालों को ज़्यादा अट्रैक्ट करेंगे दी औरल कम्यूनिकेशन सेक्शन विल कावर प्लानिंग एंड एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ इफेक्टिव प्रजेंटेशन किसी बिजनेस सिचुएशन में अगर आपने कोई प्रेजेंटेशन करनी है तो उसको आप किस तरह प्लान करेंगे और उसको डिलीवर किस तरह करेंगे उस प्रेजेंटेशन को बेशक वो प्रेजेंटेशन आपने कोई चीज़ बेचने के लिए करनी है या कोई अपना आइडिया अपने कंपनी में दिखाने के लिए अपने कॉलीग्स को या अपने बॉसेस को दिखाने के लिए आप कोई प्रेजेंटेशन करेंगे जिस किस्म की भी वो प्रेजेंटेशन होगी उसको हम प्लान किस तरह करेंगे और डिलीवर किस तरह करेंगे ये इस कोर्स में हम देखेंगे हम ये भी देखेंगे कि ग्रुप बिहेवियर किस तरह इफ़ेक्ट करता है आपकी प्रेजेंटेशंस को या आपकी ओरल कम्युनिकेशन को कि जिन लोगों के साथ आप काम कर रहे हैं उनका बिहेवियर और आप एक ग्रुप के अंदर किस तरह आपको इंटरेक्ट करना चाहिए प्लानिंग एंड कंडक्टिंग इफेक्टिव इफेक्टिव मीटिंग्स इज़ आल्सो एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ औरल कम्युनिकेशन बिकॉज इन बिजनेस सिचुएशन लॉट ऑफ द टाइम यू आर इन्वॉल्व इन मीटिंग्स and in many situations you will be planning those meetings in many situations you will be conducting those meetings and in many situations you will just be attending the meetings but in either case in any in either scenario you will need to know how what the rules of uh, such meetings are and how to um, interact and communicate depending on your role to aapka jo bhi role hai apni organization mein ya ek specific meeting mein uske hisab se ye हम देखेंगे कि आपको किस तरह कम्युनिकेट करना है आपकी टोन क्या होनी चाहिए आपके 
الفاظ کس قسم کے ہونے چاہیے اور اس کے رولز کیا ہیں میٹنگز میں حصہ لینے کے ناؤ دا ڈیٹیلس آف دا کورس آر سچ دیٹ دیر آر فورٹی فائیو لیکچرس ایز فار ایز اسائنمنٹس آر کنسرنڈ ایچ اسٹوڈنٹ ول سبمٹ اے رپورٹ وچ ول بی ون تھاؤزنڈ ٹو ون تھاؤزنڈ فائیو ہنڈریڈ ورڈس اینڈ یو ول بی اسائنڈ اے ٹاپک تو ہم آپ ہم آپ کو ٹاپک دیں گے اور آپ اس کے اوپر ہزار یا پندرہ سو ورڈس کی ایک رپورٹ لکھیں گے اس کے علاوہ ہر اسٹوڈنٹ کو ایک ٹیکنیکل ریسرچ پیپر بھی سبمٹ کرنا ہے جو کہ وہ بھی ہزار یا ڈیڑھ ہزار الفاظ تک کا ہوگا اینڈ دیٹ ول آلسو بی آن اسپیسیفک ٹاپک سو دیٹ دیٹ میکس ٹو اسائنمنٹس ون ٹو مین اسائنمنٹس ون وچ از رپورٹ آن اے ٹاپک اینڈ اٹس اٹس ناٹ اے ٹیکنیکل رپورٹ بٹ اے جنرل رپورٹ بیسڈ آن آبویسلی گائڈ لائنس دیٹ وی ول بی لوکنگ ایٹ ان دا کورس اینڈ دی سیکنڈ ون از ٹیکنیکل ریسرچ پیپر آف اگین آف ون تھاؤزنڈ ٹو ففٹین ہنڈریڈ ورڈس آن گیون ٹاپک The grading is as such that the report, the first one that we talked about, will be 10% of your overall grade and so will the technical research paper. So, your report will be 10% of your total marks and your technical research paper will be 10% of your total marks. Besides, 15% of your quizzes and 15% of your written assignments will be in reports and research paper in reports and research paper will be in the same way. So, now that makes 50% of your grade in terms of quizzes and assignments. The rest 50% of your grade is divided in exams. 20% will be a midterm exam and 30% will be a final exam. So basically, if you are regular with your assignments and you do well in your assignments, that means that you've got 50% of your grade taken care of. And then you only have to uh, think of the 50% for your exams. You will be using the Mayfield Handbook for Technical Writing as your main course book and you can also access the website that you see in front of you for information and material. The course is divided in four modules. Module 1 is the basics of effective and technical communication. Module 2 will uh, talk about uh, different forms of written communication which will include uh, reports, proposals, letters, memos, applications, resumes, instructions, and specification documents. So we will be looking at all these different types of business and technical communication in module two. In module three, we will look at research and writing. As you remember, you need to write a research paper, and that is what you will be looking at in module three. So we will look at all the different forms of research and how to construct and effectively write research papers. Um, and the final module, module 4, will look at oral communication, which will include the presentations and effective meetings, etc., that I just talked about. Now, as a person working in a business and technical environment, uh, and as a, um, a person who is communicating in such an environment, you will need to identify your two roles at work. One role is of you as a specialist, where you will need to generate ideas which will hopefully uh, be useful potentially in your organization. In your second role, you will need to share the results of your ideas with either your co-workers or your customers or colleagues, uh, co-workers, colleagues. Um, so there are, when you are communicating, you are every person when, they are uh, when, when he or she is communicating, it has two different roles. Her business situation may جو لوگ کام کر رہے ہوتے ہیں بزنس آرگنائزیشنز میں ان کے دو رولز ہوتے ہیں پہلا رول تو یہ ہے کہ وہ آئیڈیاز اپنے دماغ میں جنریٹ کرتے ہیں اور ان کے اوپر سوچتے ہیں اور ان کے اوپر یہ سوچتے ہیں کہ ان آئیڈیاز کو بہتر طریقے سے کس طرح استعمال کیا جا سکتا ہے کس طرح پریزنٹ کیا جا سکتا ہے اور جو دوسرا رول ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ ان آئیڈیاز کو کمیونیکیٹ کس طرح کیا جائے اور ان کے جو ریزلٹس ہیں ان آئیڈیاز کے یا ان جو آپ کے خیال تھے ان کے ان کے ریزلٹ میں جو آپ اپنے کالیگس کو بتانا چاہ رہے ہیں باتیں ان چیزوں کو کمیونیکیٹ کس طرح کیا جائے تو یہ دونوں سائڈ بائی سائڈ آپ کے رولز چلتے ہیں کیونکہ کوئی انسان خالی یہ نہیں کرتا کہ اپنے آئیڈیاز جنریٹ تو کریں لیکن ان کو شیئر نہ کریں تو اس لیے آپ جب شیئر کریں گے آئیڈیاز تو آپ کو جنریٹ کرنا ہے اور جب آپ جنریٹ کریں گے تو آپ کو ظاہر ہے وہ ان کو شیئر کریں گے تاکہ ان کے اوپر عمل ہو سکے نو لیٹس ٹیک دی ایگزامپل آف نائلا ہو از اے نیولی ہائر ڈائٹیشن ایٹ اے لارج ہاسپٹل شی نیڈس ٹو کمیونیکیٹ ہر آئیڈیاز ٹو ہر 
and to the people around her. Now, as a person who is new in the organization, uh, obviously, it's, she needs to devise ways so that her message can be effectively understood and implemented upon. Let's suppose she's uh, found a way to reorganize the hospital kitchen to save money, time, etc., to be more efficient. Her insights, her ideas will benefit not only the hospital, but also the patients, not only the administration, but also the patients, but only if they are communicated to someone who has the power to implement them, who has the power to actually implement the changes that she want, wants. And that someone could be, for example, the uh, kitchen director maybe. Now, unless she is successful in the way she writes and unless she communicates her ideas properly, she will not be heard, her ideas will not be uh, looked upon favorably and they will probably, if she writes uh, an unimpressive report um, advocating these ideas, that report will probably just be put aside somewhere and nobody will really want to look at it. But obviously, if her report is such that it, it catches the attention of the kitchen director, uh, then there is a chance that her ideas may be uh, put in use, if not all of them and then at least some of them. Now, and that is why writing is critical to your success. The way you write will determine how successful you are in the purpose of your writing. As a college student uh, or as a student of the virtual university, you will need to spend an average of 20% of your time at work writing whether it's for this course, business and technical communication, or for whether it's for other courses, as a student, 20% of your time will be engaged in writing. This is when you're not in the class. 20% job ka time hai, wo ek har student ka kisi na kisi tarike ke likhne mein jayega. And that approximately comes to one day if you're uh, working five days a week. Let's have a look at this graph. Uh, this was uh, a study that was conducted for uh, 896 students in American universities. And this graph plots uh, for a percentage of hours uh, spent studying versus the number of people who responded to the survey. As you can see, 31% of the students who were um, involved in this uh, survey spend about 11 to 20% of their time at written work. So besides the fact that you will be spending a lot of the time, your time as a student doing writing, uh, it will also, writing will also enable you in your job. And apart from these two, it will bring you a lot of personal benefits as well. If you're writing effectively, then there are a lot of personal benefits uh, in it for you. And these benefits can be a recognition in the form of praise. Obviously, if you've written well and you get praise for it, then that means that you recognition. And recognition is a very important part of motivation. So, writing well then raises your self-esteem. You can also uh, be eligible for raises. If you're writing well in your work, then you are uh, more likely to get a pay raise in your work and also you're more likely to get promotions in your work if your writing is effective. In, um, in many organizations, oral communication with uh, upper management is not feasible. In, in a lot of companies, uh, your memos, reports and other writing may be the only evidence they have of your good work as either a specialist or as a communicator. Now, it happens that in an organization, if you have many ideas in your own ideas and you can also communicate those ideas in your own ideas with your upper management, but they are not registered until they are not registered until you have to write them in any way to write them in any way. क्योंकि बहुत बार ये होता है कि जब आपकी प्रमोशन का जब आपकी रेज का वक्त आता है तो जो आपने काम लिख के किया होता है वो ही देखा जाता है और जो आपने जबानी किया होता है वो चीज लोगों के दिमाग में नहीं रहती और खास तौर पे क्योंकि उसका कोई सबूत नहीं होता जो आपने जबानी बात की हो इसलिए वो इन कंपेरिजन टू अदर एम्प्लॉइज वो आपकी देखी नहीं जा सकती क्योंकि उस वक्त जो आपने बात कही वो कही और खत्म हो गई लेकिन जो आपने बात लिखी भी होती है वो बात तक रहती है और वो एक एविडेंस है कि आपका काम सचमुच इतना अच्छा था तो इसलिए बहुत जरूरी है कि आपके मेमोज रिपोर्ट्स या जो भी आपने लेटर्स वगैरह लिखे हों अपनी कंपनी के अंदर वो हो एज इस्तेमाल हो सके सबूत के तौर पे कि आपका काम कितना अच्छा है 
And also writing is an important responsibility of managers who have to communicate a wide variety of messages to those who are above them and those who are below them. Uh, and therefore, employers look for writing ability when they are considering people for advancement, for promotions. Jab tak ek manager ki writing ability achhi nahi hogi, tab tak mushkil hi hai ke wo promote ho sake, kyunke zahir hai ek manager ne bohat si cheeze likh ke apne se upar walon ko bhi communicate karni hai aur apne se niche walon ko bhi communicate karni hai. In a study of 94% of the graduates from seven departments that send students to technical writing classes, it was reported that the ability to write well is of some importance to them. Furthermore, 58% of these said that it is of great or critical importance to them. As we will see, a survey that was conducted in which 94% of the graduates were in seven different departments, they said that writing well or good writing has some kind of importance in their work. So, this was the case of the students. Now, we will see how much technical writing is necessary. As we saw in a survey of people listed in the Engineers of Distinction, 89% of the people who were questioned said that the writing ability is considered when a person is considered for advancement. So, if 89% of the people who were interviewed in the Engineers of Distinction में इंटरव्यू हुए हैं अगर वो उसमें से 89 परसेंट लोग कह रहे हैं कि हम प्रमोशंस के टाइम ये देखते हैं कि एक इंसान की राइटिंग एबिलिटी कैसी है तो जाहिर है राइटिंग की बहुत इम्पोर्टेंस है अब इस ग्राफ में ये देखें कि जो रिस्पोंडेंट्स थे उसमें से तकरीबन 36 परसेंट ने कहा कि राइटिंग And in addition to bringing you uh, recognition, writing, as we said, brings you personal satisfaction because it will enable you to make an important impact on the people who are reading your writing. So, uske wajah se zahir hai, aapke jo self-esteem to aapki raise hogi hi, lekin jo aapke writing ke padne wale hain, unki aankhon mein bhi aur unki nazar mein bhi aapke jo credibility hai, wo bohat zyada establish ho jayegi agar aapki writing achhi hai to. And to succeed in any endeavors, during your professional career, you will need to influence people's opinions, actions and decisions, mostly through writing. Jo aap zabani taur pe logon ko influence kar sakte hain, wo influence jo hai, wo bohat momentary hota hai. Wo us waak log impress hote hain, lekin wo zaruri nahi ki wo jo aap ne unpe achcha impression create kiya, wo aage tak rahe. Iske baraks jo aap writing se, आप जो इम्प्रेशन क्रिएट करते हैं अपने पढ़ने वालों पे वो इम्प्रेशन ज़्यादा देर तक रहता है और वो ज़्यादा उसका ज़्यादा चांस है कि लोगों के ओपिनियंस और आपके बारे में जो उनका रिएक्शन है वो इन्फ्लुएंस हो सके तो इसलिए ज़रूरी है कि अगर आपकी राइटिंग अच्छी है तो जाहिर है आपका इम्पैक्ट पॉजिटिव होगा और अगर आपकी राइटिंग बहुत अच्छी नहीं है तो वो जो इम्प्रेशन पड़ेगा वो बहुत अच्छा नहीं पड़ेगा और फिर वही इम्प्रेशन आपके पढ़ने वालों के साथ ज़्यादा देर तक रहता है uh, writing at work also differs from writing at school. To write successfully at work, you will need to develop new writing skills and even new ways of thinking about writing. Jo aap abhi tak writing karte rahe hain, school mein, college mein, university mein, wo if ab bahut agar achhi bhi hai, to aapko apni job mein kam karne ke liye aur job mein likhne ke liye aapko bahut si nai skills istemal karni padengi, jo ke aapne shayad apne school or college career mein kabhi na ki ho. And this is basically because on the job writing, writing that you're doing on the job is very different from writing that you're doing for school because the purpose is different. Jo aap ek student ke taur pe writing kar rahe hain, uska purpose hoga shayad ek term paper likhna ya exam paper likhna ya koi written test karna ya assignment likhna. Iske baraks jo aap as an employee kaam kar rahe hain, wo aapke educational purpose nahi hoga, wo instrumental purpose hoga. Aapne us apni writing se koi change lana hai. So, whereas one purpose that you may be involved in right now is an education purpose. For example, the assignments that you will do for this course or other courses at virtual university, they will be for educational purposes. Whereas the writing that you will do on your job, in your in your work environment will be for instrumental purposes. They will act as that those pieces of writing will act as instruments to bring about some kind of change. So because the purposes are different, 
the ways of writing will be different, the rules will differ as well. And most of your um, communication in your work environment will be designed to help your employer achieve some kind of practical business objectives. Whereas in, uh, as a student, you are not designing your writing to help your teacher achieve uh, any kind of uh, objectives as such. It's only for uh, assessment or improvement of some form or the other. Now, for example, at school, where your aim is to show how much you know, uh, one of your major writing strategies is to write as much as you can about your subject. We see that many times students say that many times we will write as much as we can 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 write. چیز آپ کو زیادہ لکھنا ہے مفید ہوتا ہے کچھ سبجیکٹس میں یا کچھ سیچویشنز میں نہیں ہوتا لیکن فیلحال ہم اس کی بات نہیں کریں گے but let's look at in contrast to educational situations what happens in business or technical situations at work you will not need to write too much however you will need to write or give the information that your employer you feel your employer needs تو جبکہ ایک study situation میں آپ کو زیادہ لکھیں گے تاکہ آپ کے جو اگزامنر ہیں ان کو یہ پتا چلے کہ آپ کو یہ اتنی ڈیپتھ یا اتنا کنٹرول ہے آپ کے سبجک کے اوپر ایک بزنس سیچویشن میں آپ بہت کنسائس لکھیں گے لیکن صرف وہ انفرمیشن دیں گے جو آپ کے امپلائر پڑھنا چاہتے ہیں کیونکہ وہ آپ کا اگزام نہیں لے رہا ہے وہ آپ کے ان کے پاس اتنا ٹائم بھی نہ ہو کہ وہ اتنی لمبی ریپورٹ کوئی پڑھیں and also extra information will only clog your reader's path it will only confuse your reader in a business situation uh, and as a result of that, they will become less efficient, there will be decreased efficiency and also there will be increased frustration because your reader might feel where is the message. It might confuse them, it might make it difficult for them to understand what your real message is. So because of that confusion, the efficiency will decrease and also their frustration will increase because they are busy people and they will not have the time to read too much. Um, also, as far as your audience is concerned, this was purpose and as far as your audience is concerned, at school or college or university, your audience is only one person and that is your instructor. Whereas at work, your audience will be uh, many different people. Your, uh, you will often create communications that will address a wide variety of people with different backgrounds. The audience at work might include people who differ in familiarity with your subject. Kuch log jo honge aapki work environment mein jo aapka kaam padhenge, shayad wo aapke kaam se familiar hon ya aapke subject se familiar hon, jis topic ke baare mein aap lekh rahe hain, aur shayad bhoat se log aise hon jo se na itne familiar na hon, to unki jo familiarity level hai, wo fark hoga. Iske alawa, jis tarha wo aapki information istemal karte hain, wo bhi fark hogi. A manager might use your information for a different purpose and a chef supervisor might use your information for a different purpose or in a different way at least. And also uh, each person that reads your communication will have a different kind of professional and personal concern that they will bring with them when they are reading your presentation or your report. So, har ek ka background fark hai, is, uski wajah se ان کے جو اپنے پرسنل اور پروفیشنل کنسرنز ہیں وہ بھی مختلف ہوں گے let's have a look at a chart which clarifies this further as you see in the classroom it's just the instructor and you and all the communication is upwards where you are communicating with the instructor all your writing is communicating upwards obviously there's downward communication when the instructor is communicating with you but there's hardly any parallel communication and you are not communicating downwards uh, in contrast to this, in an organization or in the job, there, uh, as you see, you are in the middle. You are the hub when you are communicating, when it's your communication that is uh, of concern. And you may be communicating upwards to your manager, to your company executives, also upwards to other people in upper management, but they might be in different departments, in different uh, divisions. You're also communicating downwards to people who are working under you, to your subordinates. You are also working sideways to people who are at the same level as you but in another department, uh, etc. So, just like we can see that 
ایک جاب سچویشن میں آپ کی کمیونیکیشن بہت مختلف ڈائریکشنز میں ریسیو کی جائے گی اور بہت مختلف قسم کے لوگوں سے بہت مختلف قسم کے لوگ اس کو پڑھیں گے جبکہ ایک ایجوکیشن انوائرمنٹ میں صرف آپ کے انسٹرکٹر ہی اس کو پڑھیں گے ناؤ ایف یو ریمبر ارلیئر ان دس لیکچر وی ٹاک اباؤٹ نائلا دا ڈائٹیشین ہو ورکس ان ہاسپٹل اینڈ ہو نیڈس ٹو ہو از نیولی امپلائڈ ان فیکٹ ان ہاسپٹل اینڈ شی وانٹس ٹو ریکمینڈ سم چینجز ان دی ہاسپٹل کچن ناؤ ان دا رپورٹ دیٹ شی ول رائٹ شی ول پریزینٹ ہر ریکمینڈیشنز ٹو لاٹ آف ڈفرینٹ پیپل دے مائٹ بی ریڈ بائی ہر سپروائزر مسٹر ندیم ہو ول وانٹ ٹو نو واٹ میجرز ہی ول ہیو ٹو ٹیک ان آڈر ٹو فالو ہر ریکمینڈیشنز ہر رپورٹ may also be read by the Vice President of Finance, Mr. Altaf, who will want to verify the cost estimates that Naila includes. Zahir hai, jo bhi changes honge, jo unke supervisor ko changes karne honge, us mein kuch na kuch cost bhi involve hoga, to is liye jo unke finance department hai, unko bhi padna hoga, uske shad, unke shad Vice President ko padna ho, taake jo bhi us mein kharcha hoga, un changes ki wajah se, wo unko dek saken ke wo feasible bhi hai ya nahi hai. Um, the director of purchasing, Mr. Chohan, will read the report because he will need to know what equipment he will need to order. Jo bhi changes honge, uske liye shayad koi naya equipment chahiye ho. To purchase wale zahir hai, us equipment ko order karenge. The head of personnel, Ms. Sara, will want to learn whether or not she needs to create any new jobs or any new job descriptions. Whether there will need to be more people who will be hired as a result of these changes. So then personnel or human resource people will need to read the report as well. And lastly, the kitchen staff will need to read the report to uh, assure them that the new work or that the new work assignment will treat them fairly, that it will bring benefits to them. So uh, as we see, it will be read at different levels and it will be read by different departments and different, ty different types of people. Now each of these uh, different people will be bringing different perspectives to the writing and will be uh, looking at the writing in a different light with their own purposes in mind. Zahir hai, jab finance wale us report ko padhenge, to woh siraf us mein cost analysis dekhenge, jabke purchasing wale padhenge honge, to woh us mein dekhenge ki hamne cheezen order kya karni hai, aur joh uski cost hai, woh phir finance walon se approve karayenge. To is liye har ek ka padhenge ka apna purpose hooga, aur apna ek tariqa hooga. And that is why, writing for such a large and diverse audience, جس میں آپ کے personnel department کے لوگ بھی ہیں, kitchen staff بھی ہے, cooks بھی ہیں, vice president بھی ہے, ان سب لوگوں کے لیے اور آپ نے ایک piece of writing جب کرنا ہوگا, تو اس کے لیے آپ کو بہت different skills چاہیے. So you will, the skills that you will need will be very diverse because they will be catering to a diverse audience. It's not just your instructor now that you are writing for, but it's for a different variety of audience that you're writing for. Now, just like there are different types of people that uh, communication at work is catering for, there are different types of communication as well. Whereas at school, you were catering for, or college, you were catering for one instructor and writing just uh, term papers and exams or um, assignments. For work environment, you will be writing memos, business letters, instructions, uh, project proposals, progress reports, etc. Each on-the-job communication has its own conventions. To write successfully at work, you will need to learn how to construct these different types of communications. Ek memo likhne ke liye, kuch mukhtalif kawaneen honge, ben is bat iske agar aapne ek khat likhna ho. Isi tarah, ek project proposal ke liye different guidelines honge, different strategies istemal ki jayengi, aur ek progress report ke liye kuch aur rules honge. To hume ye is course mein, hum ye sab cheezen dekhenge, ke in different written communication کے لیے کیا rules ہیں کیا strategies ہیں اور ان کے different communication کے audience کیا ہے purpose کیا ہے another important issue is that of ownership ownership of a writer's work is very important while at school your communication only belongs to you at work however your communication will belong only partly to you ظاہر ہے جو سکول میں آپ نے کام کیا یا کالیج میں کام کیا ایز اسٹیوڈن جو بھی آپ نے لکھا ہے وہ اس کے اوپر آپ کا نام ہے اور وہ آپ کا کام ہے اس کے اوپر اچھے مارکس ملیں کم مارکس ملیں زیادہ مارکس ملیں وہ آپ کو ایٹریبیوٹ ہوں گے اور وہ آپ کی اچیومنٹ ہے یا نون اچیومنٹ ہے وٹ ایور دیٹ می بی بٹ اٹ از یور ورک اینڈ یور رسپانسبلٹی ان اے ورک انوائرمنٹ ہاؤ ایور آل دو اٹ از یور رسپانسبلٹی وٹ ایور یو ریٹن اٹ ول ناٹ آلویز بی ریکگنائز ایز یور ورک 
اس لیے ضروری ہے کہ کیونکہ رسپانسبلٹی تو آپ کی ہے جو آپ نے کام کیا اس کے اچھا یا برا ہونے کی ذمہ داری آپ کے اوپر آتی ہے لیکن ضروری نہیں ہے کہ جو سارے لوگ اس کو پڑھیں ان کو یہ پتہ بھی ہو کہ وہ آپ نے لکھا ہے تو اس لیے وہ جب کہ بہترین ہونا چاہیے لیکن ضروری نہیں ہے کہ اس کی ریکگنیشن بھی آپ کو ملے گی اس کے بہترین کام کی ہمیشہ کیونکہ جو بھی آپ کا کام ہے وہ آپ کے امپلائر کی ملکیت ہوگا وہ ہمیشہ آپ کی ملکیت نہیں ہوگا فار ایگزامپل اف یو آر رائٹنگ اے لیٹر آن بہاف آف یور کمپنی آل دو یو آر رائٹنگ اٹ اٹ از یور رسپانسبلٹی اٹ ہیز بین ریٹن آن بہاف آف یور کمپنی دیر فور اٹ بیکمز اے پراپرٹی آف یور کمپنی اینڈ یو ہیو بین یو آر پروجیکٹنگ یور کمپنی سو بیسکلی واٹ یو آر رائٹنگ ریپرزینٹس ناٹ اونلی یو بٹ یور ڈپارٹمنٹ اینڈ یور امپلائر ایز ویل سو دیر از اے لارجر رسپانسبلٹی بیکاز یو آر ٹیکنگ مور پیپل ود یو If you, uh, for example, if you're writing to a customer, the customer doesn't know you, but they know the company. So then you're representing your company and your letter is giving a specific image of your company. Uh, if you write a proposal, the, your employer may get the contract, get a contract on, based on that proposal or lose the contract. So it's not only your writing or the impression that people have of you that is at stake, it is also something much larger. اگر آپ کا پروپوزل اچھا نہیں ہے تو جب آپ کا امپلائر اس پروپوزل کو استعمال کر رہا ہے کسی کانٹریکٹ کے لیے تو اگر ان کو وہ کانٹریکٹ نہ ملا تو وہ آپ کی کمپنی کی بدنامی ہے یا آپ کی کمپنی کے لیے نقصان ہے تو اس لیے بہت ضروری ہے کہ جو آپ رائٹنگ کریں اس میں صرف آپ کا پرسنل بینیفٹ آپ نہ اپنا پرسنل بینیفٹ نہ دیکھیں لیکن اپنی کمپنی کا بھی دیکھیں اور یہ سوچ کے آپ پھر مزید اپنی رائٹنگ کو افیکٹیو کریں ٹو ادر سچویشن فیئرلی کامن ایٹ ورک Uh, employers often work on committees that write reports, proposals and other documents collaboratively. Bhoat sa kaam log mil ke karte hain, collaboration mein karte hain, aur logon ke saath ya committees ke saath. And that is why the final version cannot be accredited to one individual. Even though you as an individual have done a lot of work on it, it might have been work that have, has been done as part of a committee. So then you as an individual will not get credit for it. ضروری نہیں ہے کہ آپ کا نام بھی اس کے اوپر آئے یہ بھی ہو سکتا ہے کہ اس پہ اس کمیٹی کا صرف نام ہے اور آپ کا اس میں ذکر بھی نہ ہو لیکن کام اس میں آپ نے بہت کیا ہے تو اس لیے ہر بار یہ نہیں ہوگا کہ آپ کو پرسنل اس کی ریکگنیشن ملے آلسو پیپل آفن رائٹ کمیونیکیشنز دیٹ آر سینڈ انڈر سم ون ایلس نیم بہت بار ایسے ہوگا کہ آپ لکھیں گے لیکن اس پہ نام کسی اور کا ہوگا آپ کے امپلائر کا یا آپ کے باس کے نام سے وہ کمیونیکیشن پڑھنے والے تک پہنچے گی Uh, it's very common for departmental reports, for example, to be signed by the head of the department, uh, even though they are written by staff members. So, if you are a manager, then you can sign a report, but you can sign a report, and you can sign a MD, and you can sign a report, and you can sign a report, and you can sign a report, and So, therefore, to succeed on the job, you will need to write under circumstances in which your employer claims ownership of your communications. تو پھر یہ سوچ کے آپ کو یہ بھی سوچنا ہوگا کہ جو کمیونیکیشن آپ کر رہے ہیں وہ پڑھنی کس نے ہے اور وہ کس کے نام سے جا رہی ہے اگر وہ آپ کے نام سے جا رہی ہے تو آپ نے پھر اس حساب سے اس کو لکھنا ہے کہ آپ ایک مینیجر ہیں اور آپ بورڈ آف گورنرس کے لیے لکھ رہے ہیں لیکن اگر آپ کو پتا ہے کہ یہ کمیونیکیشن آپ نے آپ لکھ تو رہے ہیں آپ لیکن بھیجنی آگے آپ کے ایم ڈی نے ہے اپنے نام سے تو پھر آپ نے اس حساب سے اس کو لکھنا ہے اس کی جو لیول ہوگی وہ اس حساب کی ہوگی کہ یہ ایک ایم ڈی کی لکھی ہوئی رپورٹ ہے بے شک اس کی آڈینس وہی بورڈ آف گورنرز ہو اٹس ایبسلیوٹلی اسینشیل ٹو آلویز تھنک اباؤٹ یور ریڈرس اینڈ ٹو کیپ یور ریڈرس اینڈ یور آڈینس ان مائنڈ تھنک اباؤٹ واٹ دے وانٹ فرام یو اینڈ وائی وہ جو یہ چیز پڑھ رہے ہیں آپ کی جو بھی کمیونیکیشن پڑھ رہے ہیں لیٹر ہے میمو رپورٹ پروپوزل ایکسیٹرا وہ یہ کیوں پڑھ رہے ہیں وہ اس سے کیا حاصل کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں یہ آپ کو جاننا اور آپ کے لیے اس کی سوچنا بہت ضروری ہے کیونکہ اسی اسی کی بیس پہ آپ بہت بہتر اپنی کمیونیکیشن کر سکتے ہیں یو ول آلسو وانٹ ٹو تھنک اباؤٹ ویز یو وانٹ ٹو افیکٹ دیم آپ کیا اثر کیا چاہ رہے ہیں اپنی کمیونیکیشن سے یہ بھی آپ کے لیے جاننا اور پہچاننا بہت ضروری ہے واٹ یو ریٹن ول بی ریڈ بائی سم بڈی ایز بی سیڈ یو ول وانٹ ٹو کنسڈر ہاؤ اٹ ول افیکٹ دیم what they want from it, uh, what are the different ways in which you want it to affect them? Do you want them to take action on it? Do you want them to consider it and keep it in mind and give you a promotion based on your work? Do you want uh, maybe not a promotion, you just want some kind of bonus for what you've done? 
whatever, what is the way in which you want the person who reads your communication, what is the way you want them to react? What effect do you want to have on that person by writing the, what you've written? Also, um, how will they react to what you, what you are saying? Will they react positively or negatively? Will they like what you've written or will they uh, dislike what you've written? Will it impress them or will it not? All these things are also important and that is uh, obviously you want to create a good impression. A lot of the times, uh, well not maybe not a lot of the times but many times you will want to, you will need to write something that you know will not have a good impact on your reader in the sense that it will not be very pleasant for your reader to read but you have to write it. Uh, for example, it might be a report proposing job cuts in your company. You might be giving reasons why you need to fire some people in your company. Now that kind of uh, report or proposal is not always very pleasant for the people who are reading it, but you have to do it. So you also need to consider the reaction of the people who read your communication and then you need to word and uh, put down your communication in a way that the impact is as uh, pleasant as possible. Obviously the message that is in the communication uh, or the underlying message makes the actual uh, pleasantness or unpleasantness uh, obvious but if it's especially if it's an unpleasant message then you need to word it in such a way that it becomes uh, less unpleasant for your reader. Uh, also you need to think about your reader as if they were right there in front of you and you were talking to each other. So you need to be very direct you need to keep in mind that the communication that you have written should read as being very personal uh, or it should be less impersonal. The reader should feel that they are actually talking to you. Okay? Obviously there will be uh, written, there, there will be norms that you will keep in mind which are for written, uh, written uh, communication as opposed to oral communication. But within those norms, we will look at these norms uh, later on in this course, but within those norms, how can you make your reader feel comfortable with you so that they feel that they are not looking at a piece of paper, but they can actually hear the words that they are reading. So, so that's why it's very important that you don't think that this is just a empty paper that I'm seeing. They can feel this idea or this feeling that what is written is that it is true that इन अल्फाज के पीछे एक इंसान है और उस हिसाब से वो फिर आपसे कोरिलेट कर पाए एंड इट्स ओनली दिस क्वालिटी ऑफ बीइंग एबल टू कम्युनिकेट विद योर रीडर इफेक्टिवली सो दैट दे फील दैट दे आर एक्चुअली कम्युनिकेटिंग विद यू पर्सनली दैट विल एक्चुअली हैव एन इफेक्ट ऑन पीपल एंड ऑल योर कम्युनिकेशन मस्ट इफेक्ट इन स्पेसिफिक वेज the people that you are addressing. Obviously, a lot of the times the ways will be determined by you, how you want the communication to affect them and a lot of the times you will not have control over the effect that your communication has on your reader. Now, for example, coming back to our dietitian, Naila, if her proposal of modifying the hospital kitchen explains the problem created by the present organization in a way that her readers find compelling, if it addresses the kinds of objections that her readers will raise to her recommendations, if it reduces the reader's sense of being threatened by having a new employee suggest improvements uh, to a system that they have set up previously, then it might succeed. Agar Naila ka jo bhi proposal wo karengi, agar jo padhne wale hain wo usse attract honge, wo usse compel honge, agar wo jo bhi sawalat unke dimaag mein uthenge, wo Naila ka proposal un sawalat ke jawab, jawabat de sake, aur साथ में जिन लोगों ने इस प्रपोजल पे एक्ट करना है और जिन लोगों ने पिछले पिछला किचन का प्लान बनाया था और उस किचन को किस तरह फंक्शन करा रहे थे वो पहले अगर वो भी इससे थ्रेटन ना हो अगर उनको भी कोई ये ना लगे कि ये एक नई डायटेशन आके हमारे सारे पिछले काम को रद्द करके नया काम लाना चाह रही है उनकी वो भी जो खौफ है वो भी खत्म हो जाए तो फिर नायला का जो प्लान है वो सक्सेसफुल है लेकिन अगर कहीं से भी इन इन दायरों में से किसी एक से भी नायला को ऑपोजिशन हो तो फिर नायला का की जो राइटिंग है वो शायद इतनी सक्सेसफुल नहीं होगी ऑल्सो इफ हर राइटिंग लीव द रीडर्स कंफ्यूज एंड इफ इट फेल्स टू परसुएट दैम इफ इट लीव क्वेश्चन इन दे माइंड देन 
इट मे ऑल्सो मेक नायला लुक लाइक अ पुशी पर्सन पढ़ने वालों को ये लगेगा कि ये एक नई एम्प्लॉय uh, आके हमारे काम में दखल दे रही है एंड इट माइट ऑल्सो सीम दैट शी इज ओवर स्टेप्ड हर रोल अपनी हद से ज़्यादा कह गई हैं या अपनी हद से बाहर निकल रही हैं और ये भी आप इन इन अ वर्क इन्वायरमेंट यू कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू डू दैट यू कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू लुक पुशी एंड यू कैन नॉट अफोर्ड फॉर योर कॉलीग्स एंड योर एम्प्लॉयज टू फील दैट यू आर ओवर स्टेपिंग योर रोल आई दो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू कीप इन माइंड अगैन योर ओन रोल एंड how your audience will perceive what you've written in keeping with that role as you write in a professional environment you need to remember three things uh, the first that readers create meaning secondly readers responses are sharpened by situations and thirdly that readers react on a moment by moment basis now what do we mean when we say readers create meaning instead of receiving a message only पीपल इंटरेक्ट विद द मैसेज टू क्रिएट मीनिंग बहुत सी चीज़ें ऐसी होंगी कि आप पढ़ेंगे तो शायद कोई और उसमें से मीनिंग निकालें और मैं पढ़ूंगी तो मैं कोई और मीनिंग निकालूँ और ये फ़र्क जो होगा हमारे मीनिंग को क्रिएट करने में ये हमारी अपनी परसेप्शन और हमारी अपनी सिचुएशन और हमारे अपने बैकग्राउंड की वजह से होगा सो एंड ऑल्सो बिकॉज वाइल्ड रीडिंग वी बिल्ड लास्ट स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ नॉलेज फ्राम स्मॉल फ्रैगमेंट्स हम सेंटेंसेस को फॉर एग्जाम्पल देखते हैं और फिर हम पूरे पैराग्राफ को का उसमें से मतलब निकालते हैं जो उस पैराग्राफ के अंदर सेंटेंसेस होते हैं या पूरे पूरे रिपोर्ट का मतलब छोटे यूनिट्स में से हम आ, निकालते हैं आ, और बहुत बार ये जो वर्ड्स जो हम पढ़ रहे होते हैं उनका मतलब हम ज़रूरी नहीं है कि जो एग्जैक्टली exactly उनका मतलब लिखने वाले ने एक्सप्लेन करना चाह है हम वही मतलब उसमें से निकालें बहुत बार हम उसको खुद क्रिएट करते हैं Uh, one word or one sentence can be uh, looked at read in many different ways so therefore readers might create different meanings from the same piece of writing also their uh, the responses of readers are sharpened or, or are they are shaped by different situations uh such as the purpose of reading the readers perceptions of the writers aims agar mai perceive kar rahi hu ke jo likhne wale hain uske ए, उसका एम ये है कि मैं ए, उनकी उनने जो रिपोर्ट लिखी है उसके ऊपर कोई उसके नतीजे में कोई फैसला करूं या कोई चेंज करूं तो फिर मैं उस हिसाब से उस चीज़ को पढ़ूंगी जबकि अगर मैं ये मुझे ये लग रहा है कि या शायद मेरे कलीग को ये लग रहा है कि ये जो रिपोर्ट है ये इस लिखने वाले ने इसलिए लिखी है कि इनको प्रमोशन मिले तो वो फिर उसको उस हिसाब से जज करेंगे और मैं इस हिसाब से जज करूँगी कि वो हमारी कंपनी में कोई चेंज लाना चाह रहे हैं सो इस दैट्स वाई दी परसेप्शन ऑफ द राइटर्स एम्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट what do i as a reader think of the aim of the writer also the personal interest and stake in the subject that is being discussed is important so whatever every reader as we talked uh, said before has a personal interest in the subject and they also based on what they read they can also be uh, um, changes that will affect them jis tarah humne naila ka dekha jo hospital dietitian thi un agar unko uh, unke unne jo bhi plan diya uski wajah se जो किचन uh, में स्टाफ काम कर रहा है उनको कुछ बेनिफिट्स मिलेंगे या शायद कुछ नुकसान हो, तो उनका एक स्टेक है उस रिपोर्ट में कुछ लोग चाहेंगे कि वो रिपोर्ट अप्रूव हो क्योंकि उनको उससे प्रमोशन हो रही है कुछ लोग चाहेंगे कि वो रिपोर्ट अप्रूव अप्रूव ना हो क्योंकि शायद उससे उनकी नौकरी जा, चली जाए तो इसलिए वो पढ़ने वालों का भी जो स्टेक है वो भी इम्पॉर्टेंट है एक राइटर को अपने मद्देनज़र रखना चाहिए एंड ऑल्सो द पास रिलेशनशिप विद द राइटर फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल अगेन इन नायलास केस a lot of the people have no past relationship with naila she is a new employee and therefore they will be making the all the perceptions about her they will be uh, making them as they read the report they might even have heard about her for the first time shayad usi report pe unne pehli baar uska naam naila ka naam dekha ya pata ho ke ye naila ek nayi ladki hamare ya nayi dietitian ek hamare hospital mein aayi hai jabke agar koi to is isliye us hisab se unka action hoga कुछ लोग सोचेंगे कि हाँ ये नई एक नई डाइटेशन है इनके आइडियाज़ अच्छे होंगे कुछ लोग शायद ये सोचेंगे ये नई डाइटेशन है इनके आइडियाज़ कैसे अच्छे हो सकते हैं तो इसलिए द नायला देन हैज़ टू कीप बोथ थिंग्स इन माइंड वेयर एज ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ शी हैड शी बीन वर्किंग इन द हॉस्पिटल अर्लियर देन पीपल वुड हैव हैड अ रिलेशनशिप विद हर एंड अगेन दे वुड हैव पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव परसेप्शन बेस्ड ऑन वट काइंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप दे हैड विद हर थर्डली पीपल एज आई सेड रिएक्ट ऑन अ मोमेंट टू मोमेंट बेसिस ऑन द जॉब people react 
to each part of the memo, letter or report as they read it. So, as they are reading, they will be having a reaction to what they are reading. Just like as you are listening to this lecture, you are having a reaction to what I am saying at this point. And then your whole reaction will be when the lecture finishes and you have absorbed what has been said and then you think uh, afterwards as well. But there is a moment to moment reaction to things as you receive them. Now, I am going to leave you today with three tasks that I would like you to do before the next lecture. In task one, I would like you to imagine a situation, in fact imagine two situations in which you are writing on the job. For each situation, explain what purpose you will have for writing and what purpose your readers will have for reading your communication. You may write in one situation as an intern, intern in another situation as a regular employee or a part-time employee or a manager or a, you it's up to you to create the role that you're writing in but you have to choose two roles and talk about your purpose and your readers purpose in task 2 you need to find a communication written by someone who has the kind of job you want uh, explain the purpose along with the various points of view of both the writer and the reader. Also describe some of the writing strategies that you feel the writer has used to achieve these purposes. So, if you have any communication that you can analyze, if you have a letter, a memo, a report, a proposal, etc., if you have a proposal, etc., if you have a job, 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 if you have in terms of the uh, writer and the reader. Who report kis ne likhi, unka point of view kya hai, aur jo reader, jo jin ke liye likhi, jis audience ke liye likhi gai, us audience ka point of view kya ho sakta hai. And you will also describe then the writing strategies that the writer has used. Okay, jin ne likhi vye avo report, unne kya strategies istamal ki hai. Aur ya aap kisi bhi, kisi ki bhi report, uh, ya kisi ki bhi communication le sakte hai, bas ye khayal raha hai ke wo communication किसी वर्क एनवायरनमेंट में लिखी गई हो और आप ऐसी ऐसे इंसान ने लिखी हो या इस किस्म के जॉब में लिखी गई हो इस किस्म की जॉब आप अपने लिए चाहते हो। Thirdly, I would like you to find a piece of writing that you believe to be ineffective। कोई राइटिंग आप ले लें जो आपको लगता है कि ये राइटिंग अच्छी राइटिंग नहीं है। Okay, this is not the way you would want to write। You might look for an unclear set of instructions. Or an unpersuasive advertisement of some business or technical product, etc. Okay, कोई भी चीज आपने कहीं पढ़ी हो या आप कहीं देखें जो आपको लगे कि ये इससे तो बेहतर मैं लिख सकता हूँ या मैं लिख सकती हूँ, उसको आप देखें। Now, once you've identified such a piece of writing, please write a brief analysis of just three or four reading moments. आपने उसको पढ़ा तीन चार जो आपके first impressions हुए उस piece of communication के बारे में। उसका एक ब्रीफ एनालिसिस लिखें, जस्ट टू एक्सप्लेन हाउ योर इंटरैक्शन विद द टेक्स्ट इनहिबिटेड द ऑथर्स डिजाइड रिजल्ट्स। अगर फॉर एग्जांपल अगर एक एडवर्टिजमेंट है जो इफेक्टिव नहीं है, आपको देख के उसके दो तीन मोमेंट्स में आपको क्या उसका इंपैक्ट आया और आपको किस तरह लगा कि ये तो what is the analysis? Why do you feel that that piece of writing has been ineffective? As another part of task three, I would also like you to analyze an effective piece of writing. Uh, this time, write uh, about three or four reading moments in which you interact with the text in a way that helps the author bring about that results. What is it about the text on first impact in brief three or four reading moments that you feel the author has been able to bring about the desired effect? that whatever the author's purpose was, has been met. How do you feel it has been a successful piece of writing? So with these three tasks, we come to the end of this lecture, the first introductory, introductory lecture of business and technical communication. As the course progresses, we will be looking at various forms of writing, various forms of oral communication. Uh, there will be more uh, assignments. There will be more interaction between uh, you and the instructor. And uh, if you have any problems, feel free to email me. And with, this, uh, with these three tasks, 
we come to the end of this first introductory lecture on business and technical communication. I look forward to seeing you during the next 44 lectures and I hope that you enjoy this course. Allah Hafiz.